welcome to the Polestar Zero event. Don't ask me what's about to happen, because I don't know, but it'll be interesting. Tell us briefly then, the Moonshot goal, what is it? To really shift from this fossil-based way we live today to a completely climate-neutral situation. All the things we have, the tripod, the concrete, the car, releasing so much CO2 or any greenhouse gas emission. So if we believe that it will be climate neutral, there is a huge step of innovation between now and that point could happen. And if we manage all this innovation in time, then we might be able to change the world to a more climate neutral situation and the PPM level in the atmosphere will slowly go down, which is need to. So that's the moonshot. We all know we have to reduce our emissions, we have to reduce, make ourselves more sustainable, reduce what we use. What's the difference with this? What's the difference now? So this is not that we need to do it. The, the, the difference is that we are trying to do it. I don't see evidence when I meet other people in the industries or any other industry that we're actually doing what we're talking about. That you said, we know we need to do it. The science has told us in, since COP21 that we need to do it. The question we're right now facing is that how do we eliminate something we're so dependent on? But we need it, so we focus on our product. The question is, would we cope with all these 50,000 components? That's the challenge. 50,000 components in a vehicle. Every component consists of many processes to make one component. It could be heated up, it could be cleaned with chemicals, it could be, you know, many, many steps. And every process, there is a risk that there is a chemical reaction, that the carbon is married with an oxygen, and whoops, you have a CO2. So every process steps times every component needs to be analyzed and re-engineered. We have to reinvent what we have developed for the last 200 years. So that's the, that's the how, if you like, and we've got the why. How about the who? Because that's what I get excited about mm -hmm. with this approach. So our approach is that we are not calling our today's supplier and tell them that need, you need to do this if you're going to join us. We don't do it. We ask as good as we can out, spread the word. If you believe what I say now, contact us. Companies who have really good connection with us today saying, can we join? Go home and reflect first. Do you share this vision? Are you prepared to take the best engineers you have? Everyone on this planet is maybe not prepared to do what I said today, but there are enough people. People are working in universities or companies or institutes. And if they go home, reflect, talk to their stakeholders, management, board, I don't know get them on board on this mission. This is the mission. We need people who believe in this. Then we can do it together. I'm here because I'm really keen on super low carbon. I'm keen on early uh, deadlines. I think governments love to kick the can down the road because they're not going to be here when the deadline arrives. We had a deadline in construction set by Gordon Brown when he was Prime Minister in the first decade of the century to get to zero carbon in construction by 2016, which was, oh dear, seven years ago. And have we, no, of course we haven't got there, not by a million miles. So, so for a company to say, do you know what? Everybody is kind of washing around the edges of this. We will just commit to building this totally zero carbon product full chain of custody, absolutely zero emissions, without offsetting. I think that's just extraordinary. I think if, if you have key players across key sectors of industry saying that, then all of a sudden, everybody believes it can happen. It's ambitious. Well, it's massively ambitious. I mean, to quote you, can they be in for Christmas? You know, I mean, it, is, it, is it feasible or is it a pipe dream? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, the interesting thing is, um, that um, Nelson Mandela said, everything is impossible until it happens. And that, that's the really interesting thing about technology. And what you've got here is a, a marrying of 
British um, technological innovation and, and in resource mining and, and, and materials, um, British great tradition in chemical engineering, uh, fantastic collaboration between Swedish and British universities, you know, some of the best working in this area at the moment, and a Swedish manufacturer already sourcing sustainably rare earth and, and less rare earth minerals from, from uh, Scandinavian sources. So it demonstrates, yeah, it is possible. It it, is yeah, I mean, and it might just happen. Yeah. And, and what's interesting about this approach, I think, is collaboration, is that very transparent yeah. collaboration no secret, yeah. we're all in this together, folks. Yeah. I can't remember if it was Mr. Hugh that Mr. Packard said when they, was, that they, their business only took off HP because one of them wrote to the CEO of another company said, can I have a summer holiday job? He was a student. And I think that we all of us forget to ask for help in this world. We're too busy protecting our own IP or our own, you know, our own interests and agendas. And to ask for help and collaborate is, is a wonderful thing. Yeah, yeah it's very exciting. All the best adventures start with curiosity. Could it be done? This is a mission with high stakes, but very leveled Nordic roots. Can it be done? 10 years, watch this space.